Hey, uh, this is Peter. I'm going to um, do a bit of an extended walkthrough of the play-by-post um, Harpoon 5 match that we've been doing for um, a good while now. I think it's going on roughly two months, um, which is usually about how long I design them for, I uh, use the term very loosely. Um, we very well could have extended this a bit longer, but it would have, I think, as we as we step through beyond where we're at, you'll kind of see why it was kind of just a natural point of getting together and just kind of wrapping it up as a final, and you'll see that uh, the Blue Forces did, um, I think, overall very well. Um, and let us meander through, first of all, um, a slight recap of the scenario. Um, I'm not going to go too deep into it because I did a pre-video of it that kind of explains a little bit more. But the intention overall was to get the um, LA class um, USS Providence in a position to properly insert a SEAL um, insertion uh, vehicle, um, SEAL unit insertion vehicle, CUIV, I, th I think, can't, can't remember the um, exact term, but um, yeah, so that's their, basically their drop-off point, as close as they can get to that, uh, within reason, without uh, getting uh, blown out of the water. The key there, and we'll talk about that as things get a little weird towards the end, and we'll kind of walk through what, what might have happened. Um, all right, so just the forces involved. And, and again, I'm, I'm not going to pull the blinder off until we kind of go through it through the blues perspective, and then I'll pull the blinder off and kind of we'll talk about certain things that, that happened. Um, so, um, yeah, the, the, the Reds were very unlucky early on, and, and you'll see here why. Or what I mean by that, and excuse me, slurping coffee as I do this, I need to wake myself up as I talk. Um, again, so let's go through the forces just a little bit. Um, let me get this back to square one, first of all. Okay. So we have, again, the insertion point is here. Uh, Tromso Airport is here, and the Soviets have control over it. There are SAM... Um, installations that have been uh, temporary installations that are being um, made more permanent in the area at the uh, large, larger elevations in this basically this kind of um, quadrant, if you will. Uh, the ISCAT radar station, which is a real, which is a real radar station. Um, it's a, I think it's a high altitude um, um, radio wave analysis. It's more of a science-based thing, but I kind of kind of reused it as the the equivalent of the uh, James Bond uh, GoldenEye uh, 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 installation, just kind of as a joke, but not really. Um, the thought here is that the Soviets are trying to convert it into a, uh, basically a Star Wars controlling, um, Star Wars satellite controlling station. We're not going to get into that. The, the, uh, the operatives will take care of that later. Um, main intention of the surface force was to of course take out as many enemies as possible but to, to really give them something to think about instead of worrying too much about the sh this area of the shoreline so one of the original um, intentions was for the surface group at, at some point uh, they kind of get get their um, get into it out here more than coming in and doing any, sh any shore bombardments and one of the, one of the original intentions was potentially to um, uh, divert, divert land forces by um, making the giving the appearance of attacking in a different area than than where the steel team was going to be inserted, etc. That we didn't really get into that at one point. I believe I can't remember. I think it was Thorn was going to do a tomahawk, and I don't know if we ever went through with that. I need to check on why we didn't do that, but it could, I think everybody just forgot about it, but at one point they were going to do a diversionary tomahawk attack, which I thought was in, very, very interesting. I don't know where, where they would have um, targeted possibly one of the SAM stations or something to that degree. Um, what else we got? We got 
USS Simpson, which is an OH Perry class frigate. Uh, we got the USS Thorn, uh, which is a destroyer. It's a, an improved Spruance class, I believe, is how we have that. Um, Ticonderoga is a Ticonderoga class. It's first in its class cruiser. Uh, some of these are a little older. Uh, I kind of mixed it up on purpose. Uh, and you'll see as we look at the Soviet units that I kind of mix it up um, possibly too much, and you'll see the result of that. Uh, they, they have a, a good mix of n new and old, so you'll see that kind of come into play here. Um, what else we got? We got the Miller, which is a Knox class frigate, slightly older but still has some punch. And I believe that is it. And we'll look at those sheets um, momentarily. As a matter of fact, I will bring those up. Show you how we were tracking this. Oop, not that. All right, so we had obviously ship sheets for all of them. Let's go take a look at Miller real quick. So I just wanted to. So we had where is Miller? Could have sworn we had Miller on here. Like I don't know, guess Simpson, Providence, Alabama. Could have sworn we had Miller on here, unless I moved the file. All right. All right, but so just to kind of point out, we also um, were placing the the blue um, viewpoint of file up there as well uh, but the main thing was that we were keeping uh, just for the viewing audience if you're wondering how we were getting orders um, we were keeping surface orders in a long-running um, Excel sh style sheet which worked pretty well I thought um, uh, what we'll do is if I question anything in the playthrough, then we can go back and kind of look at what was happening around that time period. I will go ahead and bring up the um, suborders to just in case we need them. All right, so they're, they're all there. All right, so first things first. Let's just plain walk through it um, in a uh, with the blue side on and I'm gonna let it go through fast and then we'll go through slow talk about it a, a little bit and then once we're kind of satisfied with that walk through um, I'll take the blinder off and we'll kind of take a little bit closer look at, um, at what blue was trying here and there and, and where the enemy was when they were trying it etc so it can get interesting all right, so let's just go for it. All right, here we go. Blah, blah, blah. Let me pause it here. All right. A lot of targets are being uh, seen now. <clears throat> Primarily, these were being um, detected by um, surface radars on Cardinal 1 and Xmas 1 here. These were both Seahawks. Uh, Xmas 1 came from Thorn. Uh, Cardinal 1 was from Simpson. We do have um, uh, Razorback 2 from Ticonderoga, uh, and we also have Dead Meat 1, which came from Miller, yes, I think. All right, just to kind of slow things down, now we already have contacts. I believe the first targets are Simpson is targeting um, contact TN-1997, uh, Thorn is targeting TN1799, as you can see here. And let's, they don't necessarily know what they are. They do, I, I recall in conversations during the match, they, they did, you, they kind of figured out the size of them. Um, and uh, you'll kind of see that as we un unveil later. But they were able to discern pretty, pretty well, uh, you know, whether it was a medium or a small. Thought they did well with that, um, and not a lot of active radar depicted. And I think 
at one point they had had monolith T from this unit. So just the fact that it was a medium with a monolith T, hmm, probably a newer, a newer class here, right? Didn't get anything off of these guys yet. And they fired, I can't remember how many they fired. I think each of them fired two Harpoon. The we uh, folks were a little bit more conservative with um, with how many they were firing, uh, which is fine, as you'll see that it does work reasonably well here in a moment. I'm gonna s slowly forward through. All right, so we're going, 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 going. All right, now we see air contacts. Uh, Guests, I. Th Guests, I think, pretty quickly, pretty appropriately, as helos coming from more than likely these two units here. Uh, let's forward. Then you still got some air contacts. Now, at this point, is where things get interesting, and I'll explain it a little bit more once we get into the to the red view, and once I take the blinders off. But um, I believe they got visual confirmation of some of explosions in these areas. All right, we'll, we'll leave it at that. There were definitely hits involved, all right? So these units at this point are presumed to have been hit by at least one harpoon each. Okay, now what's going on back here? At this point, there is another launch. Ah, no, this is the SAM launches from Ticonderoga, and this was very good. This was done well, I think. Boom. It does take them both out without too much problem. What I... <laughs> when, once you see what type of um, helo those are, um, they don't have much in the way of uh, countermeasures, which I thought was a little weird, but um, uh, their primary role is uh, anti-submarine, and this guy in particular was about to lay a pattern almost right on top of Alabama. So Alabama should send a thank you, Graham, to the captain of the Ticonderoga. Unbe unbeknownst to him, Alabama probably would have gotten into some trouble here. So let's go through that. They're taken out. All right. The helos are still over here, kind of going back, going around. Now I think I... Let me, let me back that up a couple pings okay hold on okay so at this point I think it was Miller Miller's or Tarkan it might have been Tuck I think it might have been Razorback 2 that laid a yeah it was see right here I put a sono buoy pattern so at this point I, I, I think the conversation w w was around where the convergence zone lay in the area and if I recall correctly, it, it kind of went right around here. The the the, uh, the cliff, if you will, the uh, the edge of of a, a much um, much more lower depths was right here ish. And I believe that they they thought, or they were on the impression that the Soviets would be coming from this direction. Now, it was a good thought. Um, it wasn't happening. And I'll show you that. <laughs> Unfortunately, sorry, y'all. Um, it, it wasn't happening. It was a good, it was a great idea. Um, um, if I was playing the Soviets or at least designing it in a certain other way, then you know maybe I would have done that because, um, in effect, the Soviets could have put a sub or two here, kind of like on the cliff edge, and and then come in. But but even then, they still wouldn't have gotten the convergence zone because the, cl the the cliff effect of it was like right there, and it, it was even it, even if you had the appropriate depth for a convergence zone um, path, it it just didn't have the it wouldn't have bounced up and and, and gotten to any of the contacts. So this is a weird area uh, in retrospect, um, and just in overall analysis, this is an interesting place for subs because it varies very very wild, wildly from um, even like 50 meters to 250 meters and, and it I didn't really I didn't get too much into too much minutiae with that I, I just the assumption was that if 
um, the captains of the um, subsurface units, Alabama and Providence, they, I just, I just kind of gave them some AI in that regards, and the fact that they would, you know, if they were giving me orders that would have countered the um, depth, I, I just adjusted it as I needed to, uh, assuming that they didn't want to run, run themselves aground. All right, um, it didn't really come into play too bad. It probably would have had some potential issues here, in, uh, in the, uh, into the shoreline. Let's see. Okay, so I had rewound it a little bit. Let's keep going forward. That was the two hits. This was the Sam's. They took them out. Okay, let's go forward slowly here. I gotta remember what's going on, honestly. I think this is Ticonderoga. Let's go look. Firing, yeah, two harpoons at TN9382, which is this contact here, which has so far had not been hit. Um, and as I take the blinders off later, I'll show you what happened. <laughs> There's some good hits. Um, go forward, go forward, go forward. Harpoons are so slow. But they are they ride the waves and are a little bit more difficult to take down sometimes. Um, yeah, as a result of them sea skimming, they, in, in most cases, in almost all these cases, we were at most getting one SAM off, if that. Um, these units you'll see do not have the best sensors in the world uh, in in overall retrospect from a <clears throat> scenario design perspective. Uh, um, you know, I probably would have just have done something different, but you'll, you'll see uh, as we take the blinders off here. All right, so boom, boom, boom. It is assumed, I think we even had visual confirmation at least generic, I kind of gave more of a generic confirmation that there was definitely an explosion in this area. At this point, Alabama and Providence also were getting a reasonable amount of interference based on some of these explosions that were occurring here. Okay, Kind of, kind of Hollywooded it there a little bit, didn't really roll for it, but you know. Whatever, kind of wanted to make, give them something to think about <laughs> at that point because they they they've been just kind of turn 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 turn. Um, that that's the that is the life of the uh, sub um, subsurface com uh, commanders. Um, we're continuing. This is okay. I think I, I think I've already depicted these. No, those were the two additional firings. Okay. Take that back just real quick. Okay, that was from a two additional from Simpson and the Thorn improved spruance. And those are after seven nine nine O and and I believe in this case both of them hit. I don't know if they knew that, but they do, and you'll see what that did. That did some pretty significant damage. Um and you'll see what class it is here in a moment. All right. Now, and this was Thorn doing another two into 9382. Slight overkill, which you'll see in a moment. But I think ultimately that actually sank. Okay. You see that right there? They don't, they, at that point, they didn't necessarily know what it was. These guys had picked it up yes at that point and they had also picked up they were tracking boom let me think about that I think they were tracking both of these yes and then that track is gone and at this point this is where we're at there is right here Alabama had been on track four for this unit, which they knew at this point was, and I will go ahead and I'll pull the winder off here in a moment, but they realized that that is a, let's go ahead and show it, that is a Kravak 2, all right? All right, the blinders are off, finally, 20 minutes later, here you go. All right, let's go, we're all, let's do it again from scratch knowing what we got now. Okay, here's where things, here's where the conversation gets interesting um, <clears throat> because of these bad boys here. Um, you have a 
a Victor 3, which is a nuclear attack sub in this area, right? I believe that the Blues thought she was probably more here, or if not both of them, okay? But I had him on the right flank kind of screening here and moving forward in front, at least at first. I think later I shift him to go this way. But the Typhoon, in retrospect, these guys probably should have been slipped, but I switched, but I kind of somewhat did this on purpose because I kind of wanted a little bit more fish in the tubes out here just to kind of see if I could cause some issues up here. I kind of wind it. The way I approach playing the Soviets is very straightforward. Whenever, whenever I GM a full side, I, I try to keep things relatively simple um, based on the fact of what they knew at the point with intelligence and so forth but before the scenario I kind of just winded him up let him go and the blues were doing a little bit more thinking let's just say um, so as you can see here you got the Victor 3 uh, nuclear attack sub you have a Sovremny uh, the Vistri which is monolith T capable that's why they had gotten that ping uh, that ESM ping um, pretty early, very early in the match. Uh, she was acting as... Now, unfortunately, the way I designed this wasn't particularly intelligent on the Soviets' part because they didn't have any data link capability. Um, at best, they might have had a near real-time connection between Udoi, this Udoi class and this Seremni, but even then... Let's see what the distance was here. Yeah, they probably would have. They might have been able to daisy chain some near real near real time here. But these guys are old here too. This guy's not particularly old, or it's a refurbished or improved Oodaloy, or at least actually that's one of the first ones. But it was I think at that point it had been uh, refurbished um, or improved. So you get yourself a uh, you got two mediums here, and this is why they were. I don't think at any point did the surface units themselves get an active contact. They, The blues kept themselves back, and, and I thought this was interesting. This was different than other scenarios we've played. Um, and I thought it worked reasonably well, if not better, than the previous executions of somewhat similar balanced force type scenario. <laughs> Um, in that they they stayed kind of slow, like like look here we're like at eight knots, and I don't think they and and I think they did well with that. Um, and you'll kind of see how that plays out as we re go through this one more time, uh, slowly. All right, so Udaloy destroyer. Let's take a look at these sheets here in a moment, or at least the data that I was tracking. Uh, you got a Kravak one and a Kravak two, just for just for extra special. Um, inclusion. Um, these guys are not not really built for what what's going on here, right? And you'll you'll see that come into play because uh, they were not detecting. Uh, you know, they were basically just getting radar horizon here for detecting the um, against V smalls for the harpoons, and the harpoons, even though they were only 561 knots, they were they were getting through. The, the 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 combat systems on these are older, and they were getting horrible horrible delay. Um, so almost in all in all situations, these guys were just getting hit left and right. Now the real, I think the crux of what went well for the um, the surface blues is um, is Remini gets hit with one harpoon <laughs> and uh you'll see what you'll see let me um let me run through that part um so here we go we do not have contacts here with uh so we do not the only thing we have is at this point from here for for either side would be direct path um um propagation for um for the sonars for the Typhoon and the um, Victor 3. Um, and it, uh, equally it affects them that they, they do they do not detect one another all the way through. Now, you'll see that right towards the end, 
um, they're getting close and the rolls were getting pretty good um, so they would have detected each other here and you'll see that as we go through all right I don't know what I was doing there I got circles on for uh, probably for firing the where are they muskets there's four muskets fired and I believe they were all shot down or I have to I have to look back hold on a second did we get any damage on Give me one second I don't think we had any damage I might have to correct that later I can't remember if any of those four hit or not. I don't think they did. At worst, minimal aim. All right. Um, so those are on Thorn, and I don't remember Thorn getting hit. I think she got them all. Okay. So here's where things get interesting. So here. The Sovereignty gets hit, and the Kravak 2, I believe, also gets hit. Now, let's go take a look at those sheets that I was tracking those with. Alright, so the, the interesting thing <laughs> is that the Sovereignty only, um, the Sovereignty class one only got hit with one harpoon. But unfortunately, <laughs> rolled horribly for for crits. Ended up with with five crits, uh, two hits on CIC, which basically made it all sensors out, um, local control only. And at that point, it was basically mission critical to at least. I, I pretty much consider it a mission kill, even with one one harpoon, because he he ends up he ends up turning wind, turning this way. He, he probably could have helped at some point, but he was basically out of action at that point, within within a couple of turns of the beginning of the match. And what's worse is he was the only one that really had a a radar capable of doing just about anything to the surface units, and you'll see that as it pans out here because there's not much else in the way of firing these guys the the radars on these guys as far as now they were getting some information from from these guys but it's the it's this right here when when they take out that I believe they start to get contact information being sent back to them and are trying to generate a, a good firing solution but but Ticonderoga took them out took out the um, helos with their uh, I think they have the improved the SM2s and those were impressive um, the, those SAMs, those US those standard SM2 SAMs had a, a lot more range than I just just that I knew off the top of my head at that point um, so they took them out and that was that probably the, the combination of I think it was Simpson got one hit on the Sovereignty, and then Ticonderoga taking out the Helix Helos. Yeah, those aren't Helix, right? These are Hunter Hunter variety Helixes, so they don't have, they didn't have much in the way of countermeasure, which I was, I still thought was was kind of pitiful. <laughs> All right, those are taken out. Bum 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 bum. Okay, let's just see. Then we're looking at the Kravak 1 getting fired at, and I think it got hit pretty roughly too, and we will look at that here. Yes, it does. I can't remember. There's two of those. I can't remember if both of them hit. I think they did. And then finally, it's this is the coup de grace. This is the killer, the killing move is these these guys did good doing that at the same time I think at that moment um, it just it just overwhelmed them as you can see I was computing same detection it just didn't help they, they all got hit and you will
we'll see. Okay, we're at we're at where we ended up. So I had I had counted this one as an op kill. Uh, Marshall Vasilevsky, this um, this Udaloy class had 25% fires. Let's go look at that. Um, yeah, there it is, right there. This guy got absolutely annihilated. He he, he was down to 150. Um, he would have taken 58, I think. I think at this. I can't remember where when he got hit, but he was about to take another 58, which would have probably potentially caused another crit check, etc., etc., etc. He ended up with seven critical hits. Three sensors were taken out. I think his jammer um, and a couple. Let's see, his Voigia. I hope I. I can't see what it was, but he's uh, the big Vigach. You is that what I was doing right there? Yes. He this guy's taken out his surface his second is that his secondary service? Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Um several of his sensors are out, but it's the fires that get him. He rolled horribly. Uh what else we got here? Can't remember. It all ended up being after he got hit again. It ended up being oops. And a piece of twenty five percent. So no matter what, he was gonna be a goner too. He he's pretty much he's a goner within a few uh, a few cycles. Oh, well, at least uh, after the next tactical, he's he's gonna be pretty much kaput. Hey Javier, I didn't realize you were on. Um, I'll open the floor in towards the end here, Javier, to talk a little bit because there's gonna be some things here that we probably need to talk about. Um, so that's that. Um, so what we're what we end up with is in effect an operationally killed Sovremni with very little. It, it, it maybe if it was it became suicidal later it might have it might have joined the fray rejoined the fray maybe here from a surface capacity firing on I don't know. Um, but it was pretty much operationally killed. The Kravak 2 was pretty darn damaged as well. Um, he started at 129. He was down to 83. His fire percentages weren't that bad, but he had an engineering hit. So I don't know if anybody noticed it throughout the match, but he, he very quickly eventually ended up down to 15 knots. I think I called it out during this turns. But he was very he was getting very slow. And this is where things got interesting towards the end. The Alabama had fired two fish at the Gronki. Um, and I think Providence, I think Javi in the Providence you'd you'd heard this occurring. And what unfortunately happens is the first two torpedoes miss. They and the distance involved would not have allowed for a wire to at at, at the point it was able to reacquire, um, but it missed on the reacqu reacquiring as well. Um, so both torpedoes in effect missed, but the assumption and we had already talked about it was that Garrett was going to uh, fire another probably salvo of two. The Alabama doesn't have a huge amount. Of, um, of that Mark uh, Mark 48s, I think they are. Um, it's, I think at most eight tops because this is a ballistic. I mean, this is an Ohio class ballistic missile sub. It's it's a boomer. It's not wasn't really particularly designed for what I had it in here for. Um, <clears throat> now, Providence did detect, or at one point had been detecting. And I can't remember if both were detecting the. Kravak one that was here, and this can't remember. Um, but this bad boy would have caused some problems. Um, we're getting into the nine, uh, twelve nautical mile range here now. Oop, off the wrong one. We, I was, I was rolling for detections throughout this, and rolling poor, very poorly for both sides, honestly, right? But within the next few turns, if not. A couple turns, I believe. Possibly mutually would have been starting to see each other, which would have caused some very interesting 
activity, I think. Let's see. She was going 15 knots. Um, Javi was doing very well throughout, and he was creeping the whole the whole way. Um, I think rightfully so, because his his um, strategic goal was, of course, to try to get here. Okay, so the other, the only other surface unit that was still around is the Tucha, all right? The um, which is an Anushka three patrol boat or missile boat, missile corvette. I don't know how you term it. Um, so this guy, this guy has a punch, but um, this is one of the Nanushkas that did. It only had. Um, it, uh, wait, oh, let's go look at it. It did not have the monolith T, right? So unfortunately, let's go look at that one. Yeah, it had the Debrava, the Titanet, not the monolith T. So that really kept it from being as much of a punch as it could have potentially had and, and it really showed this scenario really showed the benefit of having monolith t a, a, an otht capable um ss-t targeting uh complex this really showed it because it didn't have anything it could fire at and it wasn't it wasn't in a good range for data link passing either right so I designed the scenario not particularly well for the Soviets uh, and it showed by the end of it um, so this would have gotten very interesting here um, the Nanushka doesn't really have like a particularly let's go look at that not sonar wise let's go take a look at yeah, wrong one Yeah, I don't think it even has. No. Right. So it's not like extremely. It's it's there to throw missiles and get out of the way. Um. But the typhoon. This is the main question mark of what remains. Victor three, the K, three five eight. Nah, it's gonna really give them too many problems it's not gonna detect them because it doesn't have any convergence zone capability here um, maybe eventually we can we can roll through um, some time increments here just to see what's going on all right so let's just um, this guy is basically about to be out of the game to the Kravak 2 that's the one that no that's not too bad hit it's not great it was the Udaloy that I think was, this bad boy was on its way out, I think. Let's go look at that again, yeah. He would have been in some serious, seriously poor conditions at the end of that, the three tactical from him being monstrously hit. Um, so really what you have left on the surface is not, not wonderful. And we also have to um, keep in mind this right here, this Seahawk. Um, it's my assumption. Um, I think um, I think uh, USS Thorn was moving Xmas One, which is a Seahawk, through the coast here to get a detection. More so, if I recall correctly from the conversation, uh, more so to get a detection of Tucha over here. And I think it would have gotten it at that point and it did I mean the blues the blues knew it was there but they just couldn't fire on it effectively at that point um, if I recall correctly by that by that stage um, Javi are you on can you hear me at all yeah I'm here um, your volume's pretty low is your Um, so I don't know necessarily what you would have done any better. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know y'all had a y'all had a very quiet uh, quiet stroll across the map, but things again. One of the main things I would be concerned with at this point is the typhoon. Um, yeah, like I think sort of looking looking now at the typhoon and what it is. Uh, the the Los Angeles class has a slightly better. Um, 
owner suite, I think. Yes, I, um, I agree. And it, yeah, and, and it is quieter. Uh, yes. So I would have hoped to be able to outspot it. And I think you would have because he wasn't um, being he wasn't being particularly uh, sneaky. Uh, you know, in other he, he was he was going a little quicker than he probably should have at this point. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, I think the I, th I think the real issue at that point is that once um, like the, the the typhoon is at that point more or less unescorted. So if Red was doing ever so slightly better, my, I think my thought like what I was worried about if if I encountered you know a, a, another submarine is. Well, I can I can start shooting and that's fine, but the instant I do that, I'm also giving my position away as well. Right. So and, and I that, was really afraid that. I think Alabama did on. very well. Uh, he didn't know he didn't maybe know he was doing it, but I think he was he was offering you a very good diversion at this point. When he yeah. was firing his, he not only fired two, but there would have been extra noise here as well. I have a feeling. I would have, from an AI perspective, I think the Typhoon may have changed course too and would have had its eyes a little bit off of you as well, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, because I think that, that that's what was worrying me. So, you know, you don't want to... Because I know that I am likely to outspot it. Uh, I, I know I can probably attack and, you know, and, and pro perhaps get that kill. But at the, the instant that I do, then any any surface vessels in the area right. are going to kind of converge on me. And so um, the, the fact that the two, because I did detect two of them, the fact that both of them were getting um, kind of sort of, it sounded, you know, with the explosions, it sounded like they were getting hit. So that oh, yeah. kind of gave me a little bit of confidence. Uh, but I'm not entirely sure what it would have done in that, you know, in in that case. It, it, it's a bit of an iffy situation. Right. And I have a feeling that let's, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just do some movement here. Let's see if this all saved. All right. I'm going to just do a little bit of movement here. This would have been interesting if, and this I'll just say in general. Um, now they did start laying Sonobu here. If, for example, um, I think the only change in strategy possibly would have been to uh, for Blue if they were maybe having one flight of Helos being um, more surface ship searching, but if they hadn't. And I, and I think that that's what their standing orders were asking for, was their second flights of Hel Hel Helos taking off and taking on more of a, um ASW role. Um, it could have helped here, too, or it even could have been more confusing to you, too, because they would, would have been mm -hmm. dropped, dropped Sano buoys all over this area, too. I, I don't think that was the intention of Thorne's <laughs> captain at this point. I think his mm -hmm. intention was more to try to try to get a, a good re, uh, at least a good resolution for passing back uh, the problem at this point yeah. though is they're they're almost I think they're beyond passing back that's one thing we didn't really talk about is that even if he had like a good resolution here I don't think he would have been able to pass it back he's beyond his data length range if I'm not mistaken mm -hmm. um, so any other thoughts um Again, I almost thought that I can't remember whose heel it was. I think it was Cardinal One or even Xmas One was coming up this way, and if they had laid Sano buoys, then Victor, this K three five one, would have some problems. Also, when the helixes were here, they were going to give Alabama a problem. Uh, this one in particular had already targeted right about there for a Sano buoy pattern. So that mm -hmm. could have gotten gotten interesting as well. Generally speaking, though, the surface the surface group is almost <laughs> a non-operational. There's a point where they very well could have, and if not, would have called for a regrouping, a strategic withdrawal here. And and you were right though that if you did start popping off. Um, fish here that and there were explosions then you might have gotten some more of these right with more yeah. ASW capabilities coming from here more than, more I think than a that. real 
missed opportunity for the surface force at this point is kind of knowing the route that the Providence was going to take. It would have probably been in hindsight a good idea to just kind of lay a nice line of Sunbuoys along the length of where the Providence is going to move. Yes, and in retrospect, I that's a, that's something I did want to discuss. Uh, um, is you can plan as much as you want, but and, and just correct me. I mean, I don't know operationally if it's accurate or not, but you definitely wouldn't have come up for communications. But I just don't no. know if you ever. W w let me just ask you flat out: Would you have ever come up to do any form of communications with the service units? No, maybe the the only the only situation, and it would have depended on kind of what was going on after dropping off the SEAL teams. Um, my plan was to kind of sort of stay still, maybe do a couple of laps with the um, with the tow array. And if I really didn't detect anyone, then maybe stick the periscope out and you know just get like a nice yes, right? See if there's anything fun around. Yeah, um, that would have been at that point. Yeah, the... you might have had some fiery ships to fire on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. At that point, I let my car go. I'm out, and you know. So maybe at that point, but otherwise, no. The other thing I considered and, and it's whether it would have been better to start off the match with the with sort of kind of surface uh, level with the periscope out. Okay. Because. Even like um, a monk, even just staying amongst. Amongst. No, the no, no. I mean, no, no. So what I mean is with the so with 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 the periscope out. An enemy ship has to get really, really close to see the to, to, to see a, to see the periscope of a sub sort of visually. You're right. not really going to pick it up with um, you're not really going to pick it up with radar. And I can see it with radar, uh, or I can detect the radar rather with the ES a lot earlier than the radar can see the periscope. So at that point it's like it's it's actually relatively hard to detect the submarine with just the periscope out no. if like if, if they've been doing it all along does that make sense right and and, and if you retrospectively I'm, I'm replaying it right now but so if you, these helixes eventually may have picked you up let's see i'm just kind of maybe not maybe at if they hadn't been taken out here, possibly. Let's see what the ranges are here. You start to get into a potential, even on Periscope, at nine miles. Like let's say, let's say even Alabama was at Periscope, mm -hmm. was doing a Periscope check here. I mean, what is the visual? What is the probability of visual, of visualizing a Periscope at nine miles? Not, not very good. <laughs> right? Yeah. If there were, um, if there were. Um, anti uh, ASW aircraft in the area doing sweeps that would probably change your mind right but uh, you don't know oh it absolutely <laughs> would yeah you, you just don't know no, and you don't know the, yeah yes yeah, so, so, so that's one of those things it's, it's on the other hand if they have no aircraft so no no no, no dedicated ASW aircraft then maybe that is better uh but uh, yeah it, it's one of the the other thing I was really worried about uh, and then kind of ended up being an issue is mines and i was yeah, really sure. considering whether it would have been worth to have the um the uh the mine sorry the mine radar on but obviously that really gives your position away at the same time all right so right. No, that's a, it was a, that's a legitimate concern um i think the little bit of the unknown from a scenario perspective was how long i, I mean the soviets had been in the area long enough of course to take the airfield I think maybe what mm -hmm. I could have framed better in the scenario is, did they really even have enough time to lay mines effectively? You know, uh, yeah. A, 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 and I, I don't know. Probably not at this point. This is it's still fresh. <laughs> like they've probably within the week taken the airfield. You know, the, these little little yeah. intelligence tidbits probably would help a little bit. Yeah. Maybe. But the thing, well, yeah. But the thing is that the, the, the Soviets, especially all of their, or not all, but a lot of their ships do have that mine laying yes. capability. Yes. Which is what kind of sort of makes them scary. Like, like you know, when, when I saw those couple of ships on the road, I was like, ah, like those ships could have been out here laying mines. It's, you know, with, uh, I think the, with these the in Soviets, particular, right? The Kravak 1 and 2, right? 
exactly like you 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 never know because they most of their ships do have that particular capability right so yeah that yeah that, that was kind of sort of my other concern i was basically kind of sailing and crossing my fingers you know yeah i think if anything it probably quickly. would have been <sighs> yeah I, I don't know strategically i just don't know where they would, would have possibly didn't done that like i mean if you kind of look at if you kind of transpose this over to like the falklands or anything like it's kind of just a similar modern kind of mm. body of land perspective yes they were doing that type of thing but they were there for weeks right you know at that point maybe after after georgia um south georgia and all so and in that case yeah they didn't have a lot of naval activity in that zone i, I don't know so um, I, in other words, I just don't know whether they would have had enough time to do it and wanted to do it at that point. I, I don't know. So, um, yeah. Anything else? Oh, you want to... Yeah. No, not 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 really on my side. Again, the 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 submarine life is quiet and <laughs> until it's not. Not a lot happens <laughs> until it's not. Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna let to me, like I think. I think like like I genuinely really enjoyed like like even if not a lot happened, I really really enjoyed playing the submarine, it, 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 even if that's a bit weird to say. No, uh, not at all. It, I think it, it takes a certain personality, and you gotta really yeah. like it. I mean, <laughs> you gotta you gotta really like it and know the nuances of those. What's interesting is you can concentrate as in uh, doing subservice. You can concentrate on the variables a little bit e easier i guess is the way to say it um because you really yeah. know your ship yeah. and you really know your sensors yeah. and then you really start to think about you have you have a very specific purpose while on the surface you have more to think about as far as something coming at you right a little bit yeah. a little bit right you see yeah I think there's also a bit more math to do involved with. I mean, I, I guess this, this this sort of depends on how you want to run it as a um, as a game master, so to speak. But for example, when I when I got the radar contacts, the first thing I did is I was like, right, I know, you know, like like once once that once I identified the ship, so I basically had a look at the chart and say, okay, well, I know how good my radar is, and I know how, roughly how noisy that ship is. Uh -huh. So then you can then kind of sort of get like an estimate of range by saying, okay, well, what is, you know, assuming it's steaming, you know, flank speed, what is the potentially furthest I could detect it? And then it do the opposite, assuming it's basically like crawling, you know, what is the, what is the minimum I can detect it before? Like, right. you know, like, it's like, definitely... like basically like what, what, what's the minimum point before you basically fire the sonar operator if you didn't detect it by that point, essentially. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but and and you know and and you can kind of sort of do that math and sort of figure out okay like they must be roughly this much away but you don't you know you don't really you, know, you don't know but I, yeah. yeah but I think there's a little bit more there's a little bit more math in that and honestly sense that than that threw me off a little bit and that's just my lack of subsurface experience myself mm -hmm. with this game or previous versions of it is how yeah the the lack of distance with the sonar passive. Um, it it threw me off. I I would have had a difficulty in real life <laughs> gauging that. <Yeah. laughs> um, when do you fire? Okay, and then yeah, how? Do, and then what I had difficulty with as a GM is how do you how do you relay that to the person without giving it away? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. That's where I had yeah. a problem. Um, it wasn't a problem with the rules. It's just yeah. How I mean, do I, I relay? And then how do you even know, okay, this might be a system, like, the systems aren't going to tell you if you have a good, right, necessarily. Yeah. So I had difficult. Yeah. that was the only thing I had difficulty with. It was very interesting, and I enjoyed it. Um, yeah. But that's where I had a difficulty as a GM, is how do you, yeah. how do you not give too much away, and especially... You know, I think Garrett at one point said, "Hey, I'm gonna wait until I have a good." And I was like, and then that 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 got me thinking about. It. I was like, he won't know, right? Well, when when yeah, like like when 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 do you know if you have a like? When Which is a little a good, yeah, exactly. I don't know why, but I I I think it's a Hollywood thing. I, I think I got 
wrongly in my head that you would have an idea of distance more mm -hmm. do, you know yeah but i just yeah no when i like like for example when i for, for me in my in my particular case um it was easier because i was under the i was under the layer and the layer really kind of sort of reduces the effective range right uh, of how far kind of of how far of the of of, of, of the sonar essentially because you don't really have um you don't really have like the very low frequencies yet so in 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 my case you know when i kind of sort of like did, did the math i said okay like you know what, what's the range i i i got like you you can get a relatively decent estimate mm -hmm. i suppose mm -hmm. uh, because they like they can't be that far essentially and i think uh quote me if i'm wrong but i think the um the, the torpedo right so i guess like, I'm gonna arrange something. yeah i guess you're right you almost have to you know you have to gauge it you have to you, yeah you, you, and and what's interesting about that is that that trains your brain yeah so i think oddly enough if i was a player i haven't had a lot of opportunities to be a player so far <laughs> um which is fine but i probably would play subservice because of that because there's a little bit more reckoning right mm -hmm. Uh, dead reckoning, yeah, almost, playing around right? with that, and, which is yeah. still I feel is weird for a modern combat system, but maybe that's just me. I think yeah, I think no, we have no, some like weird realities stuck in our head from Hollywood depictions. Yeah, yeah, and, and have yeah, absolutely. Have you seen like uh, have you seen Wolf's Call by any chance? No. Oh, you should no, see that. No, oh, no, if no. you like subsurface, <laughs> uh, I, I, I digress, but yeah, Netflix Wolf's Call, watch it, mm -hmm. especially if you like subsurface. It's a French movie, um, uh, I will... but it's good. It, it's um, yeah. Uh, it's worth getting through the subtitles. Um, well, <laughs> unless you know French. <laughs> no, I do not know French, okay. unfortunately. Um, um, I'll definitely give it a watch then at some point. It's very good, very good. Um, I would put it up. I would put up there. Crimson. It, it actually reminded me a little bit of Crimson Tide, uh, which I love too. Um, so I think I'll probably wrap it up now. Yeah. But um, I yeah. thought overall, it's it, it was very much a let's get a little bit of every class out there we can and see what happens. But I thought it was kind of interesting. Yeah, and see how they do. Yeah. All right. Well, I, gonna... well, I think as well, sort of like at, at this point in the war specifically, I think the NATO just has that advantage over um, over sort of Russian forces in in in, in technology. Like if, your your sensors are slightly better, your SAMs reach slightly longer, your submarines are slightly quieter. Right, but if you looked at yeah, definitely at this, definitely. But at, at this particular point specifically, yeah, I mean, yes, not, not yeah, sort of late throughout the Cold war. war. Yes, I totally agree. But now, like, in, like immediately, like if it happened now, not so much, right? Because of all, well, we won't get oh, too yeah. much into into <laughs> literal war, littoral warfare analysis, but. Because of yeah. the way that we've uh, bought certain classes of newer style ships, and not, you know, we won't get too deep into. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but they're catching up, right? Is basically Absolutely. is basically the way to put it, and and then hopefully, hopefully at some point, I'll run through my South China Seas one once we get the, uh, um, once we get the China source books so that that could be interesting because i i haven't done i've mostly done cold war so far and mm -hmm. i think i've now i want to see how does this compare with brand new if not near future systems so i'm kind of interested to move that way and then kind of move move around a yeah bit. i wouldn't mind doing like a eventually uh like an early cold war right like a 1960 style you know just kind oh, of a little yeah, bit more so like rough really, around the yeah. edge yeah i wouldn't mind doing something like that maybe in the round cube that would be interesting yeah all right all right i uh, will call it quits and uh, i thought it was a good scenario overall and i thought yeah, everybody no, thank did. you thank you very much for running it that yeah was great at, at some point i'll do another one uh it'll probably be south china sea and then beyond that we'll we'll see where we go all right see. have a all good right. one you as well see you around